Uh, we've been on this journey of the many faces of a leader, and um, we're coming to a close. There's two more weeks. Bill's speaking next week, and uh, this week I'm going to be introducing somebody in one second, but the goal of this is to show that actually we have a multitude of different kinds of leaders, and that all of us have the ability to lead and influence and touch people. And that it's a place right now as we're creating a culture that says everyone is welcome here. Everyone has the right to Jesus. And we all have a responsibility to represent him. So as we get to do that, we are living for our mission statement, which is loving the lost into family. And the beautiful part about that is we are where family starts. But the cool part about today is since I started working here, there was another service called the Zomi Church, Zomi Bethel Church, right? So um, they are use this building as well, and I started building a relationship with their pastor, and you guys have probably seen him before, but the cool part is, is seeing that I have a brother who might speak a different language, who might worship different, but the beautiful part is we serve the same Jesus. And as I've gotten to know him, his character represents that of somebody who is on fire for Jesus and wants people to know him, be touched by him, and is willing to live in sacrifice for that. So I want you guys to join me in a round of applause to welcome him as he comes up to speak. Thank you, thank you. <coughs> it's my privilege and honor to be here this morning. Thanks, Pastor Stefan, for inviting me to speak this morning. We've been using this building for the past eight years, and uh, we are getting started. We are having fun, and we share the same musician, uh, Van, the bassist, and uh, Som Tuang. They are our great worship team, uh, musicians, and we are sharing uh, them. So uh, thank you for using them. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> Uh, greetings to you all from Zomi Battle Church. Like uh, the pastor said, I am the pastor here at Zomi Battle Church, uh, and we have been enjoying these facilities. Thanks for your generosity once again and again. Uh, without your generosity, we won't be able to reach out many of our Zomi families. Uh, we, uh, we are now packed, uh, the building. If you come see in the afternoon, all the buildings are filled with kids. Like we have like more than 60 kids. You know, they, they are excited. They can't wait to come to church every Sunday. So it's a beautiful thing that we are worshiping the same God in different language. So probably uh, I rarely speak in English uh, as, uh, when I preach. I preach in Zomi. Probably I should preach in Zomi and I trust the Holy Spirit to translate to you in English. How about that? Mike's like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll preach in English. Okay. Uh, if you have your Bible, with, uh, turn with me. John chapter 21. Uh, now we are, we are not in the weekend, uh, Easter weekend, but I'm still preaching on the East, uh, resurrection of Christ. Uh, this morning, I'll preach on the power of Christ's resurrection. So, if you have your Bibles, please turn with me. If you don't, probably we have on the, the slide on the, up here, right? I believe. Uh, if we don't, that's fine. I'll read it out loud. Okay. Uh, it's uh, John 21, John, Gospel John chapter 21, verse 15. Starting verse 15. So when he, they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again for a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him for the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? 
Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Let's look to the Lord in prayer real quick. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunities that you have given us today, this morning, to be able to speak to your people, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit will enable me to communicate your word as it is written and encourage us and touch us with your love. I commit the rest of the time and my everything in your mighty care. Jesus Christ, holy and precious name I pray. Amen. A couple centuries ago, William Booth, the founder of Salvation Army, predicted what's going to happen in the 21st century. He said, the chief danger, there, there will be a great danger to the church. Uh, what's going to happen is in the 21st century, in the 21st century, there will be religion without Holy Spirit. There will be Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, politics without God, heaven without hell. Hell, heaven without hell. And he was right. We see a lot of things happen in this 21st century. We heard a lot about <clears throat> Christianity from America. I was born in uh, the northwest part of Burma, Indian border, and we ended up living in uh, Mizoram, which is part of India. We were surrounded, uh, we, were, we live on the top of the mountain. We got Christianity like a uh, hundred years ago from American missionary, uh, Dr. Coop. He is a missionary from Philadelphia <coughs> to our country. And we really look up to the American Christianity every time. Like, <coughs> our community is like a tiny community, uh, ethnic people group minority, even in Burma and India. But because of the mission, the mission works done by uh, the church in America, we, the entire community, become Christian in like 30 years. What a, it's really amazing. You know, the power of God. That's the power of resurrection. You know, it's really, we, and then we really look up to Christianity in America. We heard all, everything about Christianity in, Amer in America during Billy Graham time, you know. The Christianity uh, during that time and now, 30 years ago and now is really different, especially in this century. But how you and I can live the power of resurrection in our daily lives. So, my first point, I would like to talk about the, the power of resurrection that brings the power of forgiveness. Without the presence of the Holy Spirit, we cannot forgive others. It's really hard. We have to go an extra mile to be able to forgive. So the uniqueness, the superiority of Christianity is that we have the forgiveness of Christ. Forgiven people can forgive others. Amen? So <clears throat> without the presence of God, like William Booth said, there will be religion without Holy Spirit. When we don't have the presence of God and when we don't have the Holy Spirit in us, it's a waste of time to be a Christian, to be honest with you. I really crave and longing for the Spirit of God to move in my heart. Without the presence of God, I'm not going to be like this today. It's because of the Holy Spirit of God, the direction of the Holy Spirit of God. You know, Moses really recognized the importance of the Holy Spirit. Notice in, uh, if you remember, if you, uh, in Exodus chapter, chapter 33, where God says to Moses, you guys are stiff-necked people. You guys are really hard to get along. I can't get along with you guys. Moses, take your people, the people that you took out from Egypt, the land of Egypt, and go, go away, and I'll send my angels. They'll fight for you. The angels will destroy your enemies. The high tides, the Amorites, and all the tides. He's going to destroy. I'm going to destroy your enemy. And I'll bless you. But 
I am not going to be with you. I can't go with you because, you because of your sin. God told them evil people. They are sinful people. God told them, God told the Israelites evil. Not because of their murdering someone or uh, commit adultery or what uh, the sin that we are recognized today. But God told them they are evil people because they don't believe in God. They don't believe after witnessing, after, after knowing what the Lord has done for them, parting the ocean, the Red Sea, and giving them manna from heaven, and all of the wonders and miracles. They still doubt Him. And that's why they call, God, call, God called them evil people. Now today, the same thing happened to us. After seeing the miracles in our lives and what the Lord has done, if we still doubt and doubt, don't believe. God call us evil. Disbelief. Doubting. Unbelief. Because not believing in the power of God is a sin. Because he's the mighty. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. But, and we still doubt him. And you know what? Moses, Moses did not say... Uh, if God say to the uh, American Christian right now, we'll be like, praise the Lord, right? Because he's going to fight our enemies. And he's going to bless us. We'll be wealthy. We'll be happy. But we don't have God. Religion without Holy Spirit. Exactly. That's what we want. We don't want God, but we want his blessings. And we might, we might say, we may say, we might say, hallelujah, praise God. God is going to fight for us. But he's not going to present with us. And we can keep on sinning and we can keep on doing whatever we want. But we are enjoying the presence of, uh, I mean, the blessings of God, not his presence. But Moses said that, no, I will not go, Lord. You are the one who brought us here. Without your presence, we are not going anywhere. It's your presence that everyone in the face of the earth knows that we are your people. Without your presence, we are not moving to the Canaan. Canaan. That changed the heart of God. God really wants to be with you today. You know, when we really long for the presence of God in our lives, God, ha God is pleased with that. Without His presence. In Christianity, the wonderful thing is that we are nothing, but God personally wanted to be with us. Hallelujah. God want, wanted to be with you personally, Mike, Walt, Stefan. Tim, you know, he just want to spend time with you personally on a daily basis. How do, you enjoy, how do you enjoy the presence of God? Like, when is the last time you read the Bible with tears and enjoying the presence of God? Do you miss that when you are in the presence of God? You can't touch Him. You can't see Him with your eyes. You can hear him with your ears. You can touch him with your hands. But you can feel him. The peace is passed down understanding in our hearts. And we are having the presence of God. And we are rejoicing in the word of God. And I'm staying in the presence of God. You know, it's more than anything. We don't do drugs, but we do scripture. When people do drugs, they, they have this feeling of like, you know, enjoyment. But when you are drunk with the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, that's even better. Just stay in the presence of God. We need to stay in the presence of God today. With religion without the Holy Spirit is a waste of time. To, let me tell you honestly. If you, want, if you come to church, if you go to Christian activity, and you don't have the presence of Holy Spirit, the presence of God in your life, you are wasting your time. Just stay in the presence of God. Don't walk away. Because when you walk away from the presence of God, you ended up frustrated. You ended up distressed and depressed. But when you stay in the presence of God, how do I stay in the presence of God? Maybe in the first time, you may not enjoy reading the Bible, but keep on reading and meditate. Joshua 1.9 says, COVID-19 should be replaced by COVID, uh, Joshua 1.9. Because Joshua 1.9 says, do not fear. Fear not, I'm with you. 
Hallelujah. God is with us. God is with us. And when his presence is with us, that's the power of resurrection. And Moses knew that. He said, no, God, I'm not going to the promised land without your presence. Unlike American Christians. He's like, no, without your presence. I'm not going anywhere, Lord. And that pleases the heart of God. And that touched the heart of God. If you are worshiping, you know, I, I enjoy worshiping God. Singing the lyrics, you know, on the screen and then worshiping, meditating on the goodness of God in my life. I am nothing without God, but now God lifted me up and made me the person who I am. I'm enjoying when I worship. When you are in the presence of God, there's nothing like it. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And then Moses said, no, Lord. Without your presence, I'm not going anywhere. And the Lord says, my presence shall go with you. Hallelujah. My presence shall go with you. And I will give you rest. There's resting in, your, in the presence of God. Are you worried about your finance, about your marriage? If you rest in the presence of God, there's a peace and rest. So, the power of resurrection is really important. And then, now, uh, I'll go to my point here. The power of resurrec resurrection give, gives us the power of forgiveness. On, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, we see that uh, Cain and Abel, they were the first offspring of Adam and Eve, the first child, the first, the first child of Adam and Eve, and they offer a sacrifice to God. And then here's Cain from his farm. He was like taking not his best, some like half-heartedly uh, from his crops, from his harvest, and he offered to God. And he was not doing wholeheartedly. And but his brother Abel, wholeheartedly, he loves God and he gave his best. Now, it's important here we can see that when you come to worship God, do you give your best? Do you give your best? A Abel was giving his best for the sacrifice animal, the best animal. And then the Lord blessed them. The Lord blessed him. Now, back in Bible times, when they worship God, when they pray, when they have a burnt offering, if their sacrifice, if their prayers was answered, the smoke will go directly to heaven. But if God rejected their sacrifice, the smoke will like hovering around in the air, curving, you know, it's not go straight. And then Cain knew that his brother did the right thing and he didn't do it. And he had, to make the long story short, he killed him. He murdered his brother. And then what happened after his murder? Genesis chapter 9 says, chapter 4 verse 9 says, God came to the Cain. The Lord, then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? What have you done? Your voice, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. That is the type of Christ. The blood of his brother cries out to God and pray for forgiveness of his brother. It's amazing. Sometimes when we are persecuted as a Christian, we are persecuted, but our spirit that connected to God will go up to the heaven and pray for the people who persecuted us. That's the type of Christ revealed on the cross of Calvary. From the cross of Calvary, Jesus said, Luke 23, verse 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. That means when somebody wrongs you, backbiting you, when someone try to harm you and persecute you, 
the blood of Jesus. Just like the blood of Jesus pleased the heart of God, crying for forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Sometimes, you know, even in our families, in our church, sometimes people, we fight. We don't forgive one another, sibling. We, sometimes we, we are like a fighting sibling. But to be honest with you, if we are humble ourselves and have the power of res- resurrection within us, we can, for- we can forgive. It's not hard. The presence of God, the Holy Spirit, their power of resurrection will give us the power of forgiveness. Number two, the power of Christ, resurrection, gives us the power to love. Jesus talked to many people in his, in, in his, in his earthly life, and he talked to Christians, mainly his disciples, saying that if you love only for those who love you, if you have a love only for those who love you, what good thing have you done? We have to go on a, a little extra mile and love your enemy. You know, like it's a secular, carnal thing to love, to like someone who love you. It's okay to love them back. It's, real, it's not hard to love them back. But the kind of love Christ is talking about, loving anyway the people who try to, steal from you, try to hurt you, try, try to, you know, say, try, try to give you a hard time, miserable life, just loving them back. It's that Christianity is the power of Holy Spirit. You can't do it, you know. I notice here, uh, in, uh, back here, when Jesus saw, spoke to Peter after the resurrection of Christ, he went to the river because they were defeated, and hopeless because their master died. They were hiding. Uh, probably they will be, they'll get the Roman soldier, probably get them next to the master, to Jesus, and they'll probably jail them and kill like this uh, murder, like Jesus. They were hiding. They were in fear of persecution, hiding, because they don't have the spirit yet. And then there's nothing to do. They go back to the same old job that he ha- they have done, fishing. They go fishing. Nathaniel, are you coming with me? I'm fishing. So Peter go back to the all the same job. And then when Peter go back, they were fishing all night in the lake of Galilee. But the whole night they didn't catch a fish, even a small teeny one. I've never really do fishing, but I sh- I should probably get it, you know, one maybe at least one. But he was a fishing master. He got his degree in, uh, master degree in fishing, but didn't get one. There's a reason. And Jesus came to them. Do you, do, brothers, do you have something to eat? He was asking. After the resurrection, Jesus was asking a bread to his brothers, to his disciples. Since they don't have anything, he's like, no, we don't have anything. And it, every day, Christ People are asking, what food do you, can you give? What can you give to others? What, if you have the presence of God, the Holy Spirit in you, you have something to give. You know, remember the story Jesus told the good Samaritan? The good Samaritan, uh, there was a, a certain man was robbed by uh, robbers, and then they tried, almost killed him. And the priest came and didn't do anything, just walked away. And then what happened next? The Levites came and saw the man lying on the street, didn't do anything, walked away. And the good Samaritan came because he had the Spirit of God. Amen. The priest doesn't have the Spirit of God, the anointing, the oil, and everything because he doesn't have the Spirit. He has a religion, but he doesn't have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The Levite have a religion, but he did not have the most important elements, the most important things in the religion, the Holy Spirit, without which we are dead. So he didn't have anything to offer, but the good Samaritan kind, and he has, he has to offer, because he have it. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, we don't have anything to offer to the world. Without, sometimes we Christians are, you know, talk out really loud our faith, but those are like without spirit, without the Holy Spirit, without spirit feel. It's like a 
a talk without it's 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 like a it's like a bucket without water, you know, empty bucket. When we don't have the spirit, we are like empty bucket without water. So here, the power of uh, in order to be able to have that kind of love that Christ offer, we need to understand their conversation. In Greek words, in Greek language, there are four loves in Greek language. Uh, many of us uh, know this one. Uh, Storch, empty, uh, em- empathy, bone, and philia, friendly love, brother love, brotherly love. And eros, romantic love, and agapao, agape, unconditional God's love. God, Jesus always talks about unconditional God's love when he preached about love. And when he asked Peter, do you love me? He said, Peter, do you agapao me? He was saying that, do you agapao me? That means, do you, will you love the people who try to hurt you, kill you, rob from you, steal from you, steal from you? Do you love them anyway? And he knew that he did have the love, the kind of love that Christ was talking about. And what he answered, he said, Lord, I feel you. I love you back because you love me. That's a secular, early brotherly love. But Christ didn't get his answer. And he asked, us, he asked him again, Peter, you didn't get it. Do you agapao me? And if you look at the Greek word, Peter's answer is the same thing. Lord, I feel you. Yes, I brotherly love you. No, this is not the kind of love that I ask you. Will you love unconditionally? And then for the third time, he was worried. Peter worried because he asked him for the third time, for the, uh, the same question for the third time. And he was like, Lord, you know everything. I agapao you, and also I filio you. I love you, brotherly, and also I love you unconditionally. That means, Lord, I will love you like the way you love. I will love the lost, the sheep, who knew nothing. The sheep will hurt you. Try to, in your influence, in your area, in your family, in your neighborhood, people in the world may try to hurt you. They try to say bad things about you. They will not, they will not give, love you back like the way you love them. But do you still love them? That's the requirement. That's Christ was talking about when he said, Peter, do you agapao me? And he said, feed my sheep. The first time he said, feed my lambs. That's inferior. But this for the second and third time, feed my sheep. So, in order to be able to have the unconditional love, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The power of resurrection gives us the Holy Spirit. Peter, when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he said, I never knew him, denied him for the thir- three times. When he filled with the Holy Spirit, he never hide again. He go to the temple court and said, we cannot keep silent about what we heard and see in our own eyes. We are not, stop, we are not going to stop preaching about Jesus. He was filled with boldness and love. He was not like someone who was like holding a big sign and go to hell, you know. But you, he did that with love. He, he comes with love and boldness. That's what we need right now. God wants us to love unconditionally. And when you have the Holy Spirit in you, the presence of the Holy Spirit will be with you and He will give you boldness and love. Boldness without love, truth without love is meaningless, to be honest with you. When you try to correct someone without love, if you are, to be honest with you, I don't want to be right, always right, but I don't want to be loved. Amen? Sometimes we are not loving at all and we are always right. The truth, truth hurts. We, we have the truth, but we don't have the love. This is the problem. When we have the love and the truth together, like a Peter, after the day of Pentecost, they were able to go to the horror world. Why two billion Christians are there in the world today? Because of the power of resurrection. And it starts with fishermen. Now God 
gives us the same power. In Romans 8 verse 11 it says, The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, the same Holy Spirit is in you. And the Bible says, the Holy Spirit without measure is available to you. It's without measure, unlimited. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 6, verse 27. Uh, it says, but, uh, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them, the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them to do to you. So this kind of love is only impossible when you have the spirit resurrected power of Jesus in our heart. It's really hard to love people without the Holy Spirit. And I will not read the next uh, chapter, uh, verse 32, but I'll go to the last point. And lastly, the power of resurrection restored sinners. And we see that Peter denied three times, but the Lord restored him three times. God is the resurrected power of Jesus is full of love and forgiveness. He's, he is full of love and forgiveness and he can even restore people who are dr drown, drowning. So, we see the restoration here. Peter denied him three times, but God restored him for three times. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? He restored him for three times because he denied three times. And the Bible says in Psalm 37, the steps of good men are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord will uphold him with his right hand. Amen. Maybe you, you think you are finished. Maybe you think you are done with God today. Maybe you think you don't have hope. But know this. God always restore you wherever you are. He would like to pick you up. The only thing we have to do is like surrender to him and say, Lord, I need your presence. Lord, take me back. We, we sing the song, take me back where we are. Lord, take me back to the place where I met you. Lord, I want to be with you. Because he directed the righteous man. The Bible calls people righteous not because they do the right things, but they, they believe in the righteousness of Jesus. Hallelujah. When God calls someone righteous, they are someone who trust not in their ability, but the in the fullness of Christ. God wants to restore us. God restore Peter. God restore everyone, every disciple he, he made. God restore, God wants to restore you today. May the Lord add his blessing to every one of us. Thank you. guys bow your heads with me lord jesus we just thank you for the words that you've poured out from our brother and lord we just pray that we can start entering into that relationship with you that emboldens us to forgive that emboldens us to love in a way that might cost lord i just pray right now whether we're in a hard time or we're in a great time lord that you would be our all in all that you would be our everything, that you would meet us and remind us that the actual place that you died for us wasn't just for us, but it was for the world. That your power was to reach out and love the world, not just us as an individual. Lord, I pray that you would show us that you could take 
either somebody who was a king or somebody who was a fisherman and still come out with the same exact product, which is your glory. I pray that you would show us that you can use us in every single place we're in. I pray that you would teach us how to be loved and how to love more. May your example be the transformation in our character, in our life, in our actions. Pray these things in your name. Amen.